Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is September 27th, 2022, and I cannot believe I'm saying that because it's already almost October. This is the SOS Show with James Lott Jr. I'm James Lott Jr. Super Organizer, and I've been in business 13 years, and we're heading towards my 400th episode of the show. Oh, I was hoping to be 400. You're close. You're off by just a couple. You're very close. And I'll try to time it. It didn't work for the other way, but you're close. Uh, I can't believe it's almost 400 episodes. We're just for eight years. I can't believe it. Um, I started out on the radio. And anyway, so we're still doing this. I have great guests as always. She's a former guest. I get to bring back, of course. This time it's about something totally different, which I like that also. This happened on the show too before. I want to read her. I had a whole bio for you I was going to read, but I was like, no, I want to read this one instead. Which one? I'm going to go here. You're going to hear right now. <laughs> She lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is one of my favorite little cities, with three cats and 33 boxes of scrapbooks, photo albums, letters, and other memorabilia she inherited from her mom and a few from her dad. Ziggy, her office supervisor, was also her best pandemic Zoom companion. When Hazel is not writing, she researching, she's researching ancestors for clients and for her own family or watching TV. I love, I just love that option. Her book is called <laughs> With uh, what's a photo without the story? How to create your family legacy? That's right, kids. It's my longtime friend, Hazel Thornton. How you doing? Hi, James. Good to see you. I mean, just, I like I like that. I wanted to. I like that. That I like that. You said you know, or watching TV. I like that. After all that. Hey. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, Being I'm honest, I'm ask you a question about that in a second. But first, I always write thanks and gratitude. That's why I've been doing it for the last eight years, uh, and because of this book. My thanks and gratitude go to my ancestors. Um, I knew my great grandparents. I grew up with them until I was in my 20s. I was very fortunate and very, I had a lot of friends, I was very rare that I actually had relationships with them. I was super close to my great grandmother on my mother's side, my mother's father's side. And I was called when she died, they said, one big mouth died in the family. I'm the other one. <laughs> um, she was the mom. She was like four foot nothing, but tall in presence. And so Miss Arthuretta Estelle Van Putten, I'm dedicating this show to you especially, but to all my ancestors before me. I carry them as wings on my shoulders as I do everything that I do. Um, and also to my new family tree, which are my daughters and my grandchildren, four, almost five, one's coming in January. Um, so I'm hoping that whatever I'm doing is a great legacy for them. They get to have not only photos of me, but also videos of me when I die. They have yep. a whole 15 years of Papa Jamie or Daddy, whoever which one's calling, whatever, of me, which I never liked until recently. Um, That's awesome. Isn't that crazy? And so, and photos. I lost a lot of photos in a fire uh, 12 years ago. Hmm. Um, pre, pre, this was, I had some things on floppy disk and some jerk zip drives. They're gone. They're dead. Uh, I let them go. But I do have some still left. And... We're going to talk about all of that and how this book's going to be helpful for you. But that's my thanks and gratitude. So, to family and memories. Yay. So, Hazel, congratulations on the book. First of all, I want to throw out the story. Now, I want you for, lay, for the lay person out there. You are an organizer and you're also a genealogist. Can you explain briefly each, just if, you were just, if, they're, not, if they're just tuning in and going, where is she? I don't know what that is. What's a personal organizer? What's a genealogist? Can you kind of briefly explain each? Well, I was a, a, a home and office organizer for 17 years. And, I, and I'm no longer a home and office organizer, except that I have resources on my website and I can point you in the right direction. And I make lots of referrals to my colleagues. Um, and in the process of that, I, after being a member of NAPO for at least 10 years, I joined as well um, APO, which is now the, fo the photo managers, they're called. And I, and I got interested in photo organizing, which is just about, uh, whether you're talking about photos or other stuff, it's about um, having a place for everything and not having a lot of extra so that you can, I mean, it doesn't, it's not about minimalism. It's about being able to find what you need when you need it and knowing where to put it so that you don't live with clutter and, or at least not, everybody's got a different tolerance for clutter. And the same goes for photos and other memorabilia. 
And so the, the more organized you can have your photos and your other memorabilia, the more you can, it's easier for you to leave it for your family and have them not go, what is this mess? And <laughs> yes, that's happened many times. And so genealogy is really kind of the science of determining relationships. But family history includes genealogy and memorabilia and photos and stories. So to the so I'm so I'm combining those two interests um, to help people tell their stories, to help them illustrate their stories and preserve their stories so that future generations can enjoy them or, and current generations. A lot of people have memorabilia and stories that they haven't shared with their living family members. And another way that it dovetails with organizing, I have a whole chapter on telling the stories of your things too. So you know, you know, James, as an organizer, how people, some people are, are, are concerned with how am I gonna leave this mess to my family or they've inherited a mess and, and they don't know what to do with the things. Well, if you can designate what's special to you and tell why and take a picture of it and tell the story, then your loved ones will know this thing is special and this other thing is not so special. And, and, and those things are more easily donated or sold or trashed than the things that were special to you. And if they don't know the difference, then they don't. So, I, so I'm talking about telling the stories of your family as well as your things in order to help people downsize and leave a legacy. Yeah, you, it's, 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 it's a, a great combo because you, are, you have the organizing experience. So that's there. Uh, because photo organization is a big thing, folks. I think that, I think it's like what well, number one's paper, and I, that includes like magazines like stuff. Then you got photos. I mean, seriously, I've had so many clients over my thirteen years who get a box and they go, "I don't know who these people are and what's going on." And then, largely, the larger question is, "What do I do with all this?" Uh, it's usually the, the big question. So it's great that you have both those experiences. I want to share a brief a brief story. Is that um, my mother and I? I found a photo of my great grandfather. His name was <clears throat> Reginald. Well, he went by. He was a wrestler, the black red, one of the first black wrestlers back in the 1900s, and he um, went by Reginald Seeky, whatever. So, but he was not put in the history books. They erased people sometimes back then if they were black uh, out of things, um, and. He was kind of like, like the Jackie Robinson of wrestling. And he just was never mentioned. But there was somebody who named themselves after him later. And they never really made a connection. He, he said it, but I guess no one really paid attention. Well, someone current, younger, found his story and went through this whole thing. Well, they found me on Ancestry.com after they published the story. It was like, oh my God, I think he relates to this guy. I go, he's my great grandfather. And he's very, you know, my, my grandmother was Mildred and all stuff. So he wrote this 25 page article and tried to write the wrong of my, my great grandfather. Then this whole wrestling community who I have some ties to, I know some friends, they're like, that's your grand. And so it became this weird big thing. But it was all photos. And I have photos too. And they have, awesome. it, was, it was all photo connection. Did the other one by any chance have a Wikipedia page? Because because if you can because you can create a Wikipedia yeah. page, I was going to say you can correct a Wikipedia page too and say yeah. the original yeah. was such and yeah, such. Yeah, the other guy I didn't see. I didn't see one. So I mean, as well as it was one of those things, I was just kind of more shocked because it was actually photos and names that brought us together. So I thought for this story that it's very interesting. That's that awesome. It was photos. So great article and you can read it whatever and wrestling magazine whatever. But it was kind of funny. Um, I'm on Ancestry.com. So yeah. So there's like. I found a few things of my family. I, I, I'm on there only because I did the DNA test. Um, I found some relatives I don't like, so I don't talk, I had to block, ended up blocking them. But <laughs> it, wasn't a good, it wasn't a good experience for me in terms of finding relatives. Oh, no. No, it wasn't, not at all, it was horrible. Um, I'm a public eye, which makes things weird also. Um, but the DNA part was most interesting because Hazel, guess what? What? My family, I come from a multiracial family, a uh, multiracial, multicultural family. Um, you parents. already knew that, right? You already knew that. Oh, yeah, my father's half white. And I knew, I knew, all this, I knew all that. Yeah, I have 
white grandparents, black grandparents, I mean, they, I, you know, my kids, everybody, they're all light skinned in my family. Everybody's light skinned in my family, one of the darker ones in my family. <laughs> Turns out my DNA, I am 47% white. So more white than you thought. More white than I am black, more white than I am indigenous, more white than I am Spanish. <laughs> um, I am, like we looked at, I looked at it twice, I'm like, is that correct? And then literally from, I found out that I had a lot more Scottish in me and Welsh and- well, you said your dad was white, right? Not yeah. light skinned, but white. I thought it was biracial. Biracial. Oh, okay. Biracial. I was from Holland. So I knew that, so when Western Europe came, I was like, of course, Dutch, that makes sense. But it was the UK, British Isles. I had a lot of that. Had no so idea. how far back do you know your history? Well, that's the point. So now I don't, I thought I, well, as far back as I knew again were great greats on two sides, both sides. I like great greats, by as far back as I can go. That I knew of myself. Now I have a whole new world to look into because I did not, there's things I didn't know. So great greats was as far back as I could go. They remembered. That I grew up with. Like they would say, oh, my grandfather did this. I have a picture of my grandfather, my grandfather's grandfather. So that's great. Yeah, great, 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 or whatever. Third grade. That's as far back as I grew up. Now a picture of my my so for me it'd be my second great grandfather. My father and my grandson, they all look alike. I love family resemblances. There's well, you have that in your book. It's a chapter in your book. I okay. do. And I happen to know what your mom looks like, too. She looks exactly <laughs> like you. <laughs> she, she said, I want a twin. Here's your face. And we both are gap in our teeth. We're both tall, same color. I mean, it's, it's, it's people stare at us in the street. It's very, very... Very, 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 very interesting. I like, I see my future, it's right there. It's a fun um, resemblance. Yes, very, very fun. But you talk about that also resemblance there too. Um, but, but I was just saying that photos are very important and can bring a family together or apart or anything, right? Well, they usually bring people together, but like you said, you know, so you can have a bad experience on the ancestry, depending on who you've connected with. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah. and ancestry is a good source of photos if you don't have any mm -hmm. you want more to illustrate your stories with okay so this book is very different than what i thought it would be okay it's not it's not, it's not just a this is what you do with photos so please explain the book actually it's, i love it. i love what, what you're doing in here but you're helping people also create all these photos more than just organize the photos well, I'm t I talk. I, I use my own copy of my book to remind me what it's about. <laughs> yes. it, it, it encourages you to tell your family stories. And people say, well, I, I don't have any stories. Yes, you do. Everybody does. Yeah. And so, and so everything, everything I suggest in my book, one of the things that people like about the book uh, is that you can do as much or as little as you like. You can, um, each suggestion is each each general suggestion like tell your stories is broken down into things you can do with either a little bit of effort or a medium amount of effort or a lot of effort and if you if you only want to put a little into it you know do this if nothing else if you're not going to hire someone to help you that would be high effort and the more the more money and time and energy that goes into it the higher the effort and and medium effort would be your family will thank you. But if you do nothing else, I list things that you can do uh, that I call low effort. And so I talk about encouraging you to tell your family stories and then add photos to the stories to make them more interesting. And because I have, I've got, I've written stories based on the genealogy work that I've done. And my family's like, yeah, yeah. But if I can dredge up some store from photos to go with it, that makes it so much more interesting. It, either we already had the photos or we found them, I find them somewhere. And if, uh, and it doesn't have to be photographs of the people either. It right. could also be um, pictures of maps. You know, here's where they lived or pictures of how people lived then that, that can that help illustrate a story. And you don't have to publish it. I mean, that would be a high effort level okay, yeah. activity. It could just be a Word document in your computer and you, that you share with your family. And by the same token, if you have photos 
and you don't know what to do with them, well, tell a story, you know, pick, pick a category of photos and describe them because it, people used to have photos all the time and they would write on the back, you know, this is what, who it is and what, what it was. And sometimes the, the notes are very helpful. Sometimes they're so vague. You still don't know who they are. Yes. And, and, uh, but, but people are taking digital photos these days. And they're missing out on the, there's a whole category of technical expertise called metadata. And if you know about metadata, you can add metadata to your digital photos that tell, it's kind of like writing on the back of a digital photo. Um, but if nothing else, you t- take the photo and write a little story about it. And you could, you could insert a digital photo into a document with a, with a description. That's another way to do it. And so you can also find out, I mean, with a little research, you can maybe figure out who that is if you don't know who that is. Right. And if you, if you, don't, if you don't know who it is and you're not going to figure it out, you might want to ditch it because it depends on how many photos you've got. Yeah. I've, got I've got all these boxes full of photos. I've been through a lot of them. I wrote a blog series called Mom's Boxes, and, but, but I'm not... I'm not anywhere near done with that project in case yeah. you thought I was. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure you're not. Yes, I'm sure. And by now my dad has died and left boxes as well. Not as many. Yes. And um, so it's an ongoing project. One of the things I recommend in the book is that, you know, try thinking of it as a new hobby because, you know, genealogy is never done. You can do, um, you can, it depends on your goals. You don't have to have the same goals that I do. Yeah. Um, you can take one surname and trace it far as far as you can back in time. And I call that going deep, or you can take yourself and research, you know, you got your two parents, your four grandparents, your eight grandparents, great grandparents. And I call that going wide. And cause you're equally related to those people, right? Every, right. every step out, you're equally related to yeah. twice as many people, each generation. Yeah. And, um, or you can take, a period of history or a particular ancestor or a particular location. Maybe you've got a family mystery that you'd like to solve. And I call that uh, focusing. And, and so depending on what your goal is, you can, um, again, you can do as much or as little as you like, and you can um, either say, I'm going to focus on this one family and this one time. And when I'm done, I'm done. And then you might be done. Or if you get interested in going wide, it's just a new hobby and you're always going to be adding to it. Yeah. I, um, for example, I have this practice with my clients. I do very little house organizing either. I'm, I'm moving more into doing other stuff. Um, but we took pictures of their t-shirts. Um, and I just saw my own at all these um, ba- all these t-shirts from, from concerts. And so I took pictures from every t- I just folded it up nicely. Uh, I used to work in retail. I don't have to do the folds. Um, and I took pictures of each t-shirt. And I'm planning on doing a book of that. And I'm going to do a description cool. and do that. And so I said, and I got I donated the t-shirts. I have a few that are special to that kept in person. Um, that I'm gonna put like an old shadow box things or whatever. Cause I like I, I love Prince. I have a couple of Prince ones I'm keeping. I have a Michael Jackson one I'm keeping, obviously. I have a few. I WrestleMania five. Give me that that's, one. That's one of the suggestions in the book is to look for patterns. If you don't think you have any stories, start going through your photos and look for patterns. I know, and, I know that. I was, that's why I brought and, that up. Yes. And that's a really good example. I, because seriously, why why I'm leading to that is that just look at a picture. And you just go, okay, well, rap, what happened when you took this picture? Or what was your mood when this picture was taken? Or why is it of that house? Why is that house in the picture? Why is the angle? Was it really bad that day? It was a good day. Well, you know, like there's there's a million questions you could actually ask somebody. A picture is worth a thousand words, but if you but really it doesn't tell the whole story. You gotta tell the story if you know what the story is. Yes. I and, if, and if somebody just really doesn't know where to start, go back to your you know, grade school, journalism, five W's, who, what, when, why, where. Just start there. Yes. Well, we're all talking to Hazel, who has another famous book that was out a while back about a famous case. That's something different. Um, so she knows what she's talking about. Listen to her. Um, I'm almost finished with another book, too. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. But she knows what she's talking about. She knows what she's talking about. Um, but no, that's the thing. I, I know I probably was like, that maybe for some people, it might be easier to go, okay, yeah, I can talk about the concert I went to or the play I went to or the musical. I got this t shirt because I loved Hamilton, you know, or whatever I went to. I, I think that's that's a way I'm trying to people who are hearing what you're saying, going, but I don't know. I'm like, no, that start with something like that. And maybe that will actually help you, you know, and or, oh. or you know, but I'm, I'm telling you, I see pictures all the time myself or my family, and I'm like, God, I remember that day and the dog was running around and throwing up everybody. I, I remember stuff. It starts coming back to you. My memory's crazy. But and somebody look at a picture, it does come back a bit. It comes back to you, but it's not going to come back to anybody who wasn't there. No, exactly. But I think it's, it's just something that's really interesting. Now, what you talk about, you have a thing, you have say you have these activity things are like low, medium, high effort. Um, I know someone's gonna be going, but Hazel. It's like boxes of pictures. It's it's floppy disks. It's it's uh, zip drives. It's it's uh, thumb drives. It's like always. It's like there's digital. There's also there's regular because depending on generation, right? It's like or well, there's rolls of of film undone and you know all that stuff. So I mean, what do we do? First of all, I get your book. Get the book. First of all, uh, get my book. Get book. And then go to the photo organizing. Uh, yes, chapter but basically organizing photos is no different from organizing anything else yes. and one of the as you're literally going through the photos and deciding whether to keep it or not there's a handy little um mnemonic by kathy um my my brain just went um and that, that happens girl and that was well, she, she's the, the founder of the photo managers and it's the ABCs of um, the ABCs of photos, which is A, this is like the A levels photo. And B is, you know, you keep it because it helps tell the story, but it's not the best photo. And yeah. C's are, you feel free to can those, you know, trash them literally. And, and S is for story, you know, tell the story and, uh, and then there's also the Julie Morgenstern space acronym, which I've used for everything my whole career. It's like, why not? And, and she likes this, my application of it in uh, the book, which is S is for sort, P is for purge, C is for containerize, um, A is for assign a home. I got those two mixed up. And E is for equalize. And so basically if you're sorting, you got, first you got to gather everything together. The flip side of sorting is gathering together. And if you gather together all of the photos that you find on, you know, under your bed and the photo albums on the shelf and even the photos on the wall. The, so there's the digital photos and there's analog photos and the digital photos are spread across all kinds of hard drives and zip drives. I mean, little. Yes. yes. And uh, yes. your camera, phone. Yes. If you, gather yeah. them, you can't really see what you've got unless you gather it all together. And a lot of photo managers recommend getting a hard drive, an external hard drive specifically for photos to gather them all together like that. so that you can, um, so you have enough space for them all. And so then you can go sort through them. And I'm not going to say, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying that's what you need to do if you want to organize them. And if you need help, hire a photo manager or an APA organizer who specializes in memorabilia and photographs. Yes. And and so there's help available. There's, um, well, this happens to be um, Save Your Photos Month. And if you are interested in learning more about saving your photos, uh, you subscribe right now, like today, because by the end of this month, it, the opportunity will be gone until next year to oh, okay. Okay. participate. If you, if you sign up, it's free and it's sponsored by the photo managers. and Kathy Nelson is her name. She invented it eight years ago. Yes. And she, and if you, uh, so what, what happens is the photo managers produce little, you know, 10 minute mini classes on various topics okay. that, that will help you get started. And if you sign up before the end of the month for free, you will then have access to all those classes throughout November. Did I say that right? No, throughout October. Oh, I you. <laughs> it, it, will, it will expire. The access is through October okay. if you've signed up by the end of September. 
Got it. it. But in any case, the photo managers, they offer classes all the time. I and mean, there's the webs, there's a website. I mean, there's a Facebook group and there are photo managers and in the group called the photo managers. And there are also photo, some of them are NAPO members as well. And there's help available is my point. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. I, I just think it's, you know, there's, there's space again, you got to find out because you also have in a book, the questions to ask yourself, you know, why do we keep memorabilia? Why do we keep, and, we, and photos are memorabilia. Uh, I always thought there was two separate things. They're, they're well, memorabilia is photos count. memorabilia. Yes, they count, right? They count. Yeah. Um, so they count. So why we keep our keepsakes, what words you want to use, treasure, well, like it's funny, I just have this thing, treasures, um, whatever you want to call them, you got to figure out why you're keeping them, first of all. Um, I have clients who, are not the picture people. They just do not care uh, by keeping them themselves. So we did a lot of sorting to give away. To say, okay, well, I said, well, I would ask what families you think would want these? You know, and that's also another thing too. Mm -hmm. um, and have you found it to be hard sometimes when, people, when, they, when they're giving, when they're sorting to give away photos? Do you find, do you have any funny, when you're doing personal- if, you, if, you if you have extra paper photos or yeah. duplicates, it's a great idea to think of who else would want them. If you have um, uh, digital photos, the idea is get rid of all but the best. I mean, if you yeah. if you took twenty pictures of um, driving by the mountains and they were pretty, you know, you don't need twenty pictures of that. You need one picture of that or three. Yeah. You know, and it and you can make copies of the best ones to share with people. But but for um, paper photos. Literally, throw them in the trash. It's it's okay, and, but but um, scan them, digitize them, so that you can all all of the photos need to be backed up in some way. And paper photos, the way to back them up is to digitize them. Yeah. For digital photos, sometimes the way to back them up is to make paper copies. You know, on on actual photo, there's nothing that lasts a photo photo actual photographic paper lasts longer than a digital file. I mean, it, 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 we got photos from 100, 200 right. years. We do. we do. Whereas digital files, even if you've got them on your computer, something could happen if you haven't backed them up, if you don't have them in an additional copy and an additional uh, in the cloud or on an external hard drive. So, so that's one of the, if you do nothing else, you know, back up your photos and also save them from the garage where it's hot and dusty and under under your bed, you know, preserve them in a, you don't have to, you know, it doesn't even have to be in an archival manner to, for the, to, to be better than saving them in the garage where it's hot and dusty. <laughs> I was going to ask you, just, I, I, what do you think is the best way to store photos, in your opinion? Well, the best way is to, um, it, uh, paper or digital? Paper. Um, to get the best way is to get archival look on look on the internet you know go to archival methods or a product uh, I've got resources in my book about about that and you can um, buy uh, what are the words the words are um, I don't remember the words I don't know what it, it's because it's, it's, it's people acid, acid free well, I always say you always say, I always say don't have boxes. They're not good. Um, well, boxes boxes are good. If boxes are better than nothing, and that's true. And, You're right. It's true. And archival boxes are better than other boxes. Plastic boxes are better than cardboard boxes. He does. He does. So there's a whole hierarchy of boxes. You're right. And, and and boxes are better than. I'll tell you what boxes are better than. They're better than those so-called. Um, those magnetic they call them magnetic they were the ones that you kind of peel it off oh stuff. yeah i know those yes i know those and photo managers call that a chemical sandwich oh, and it man. and it messes with the chemistry of the photo itself and it gets yellow over time and is not good if you if you do nothing else get your photos out of those old magnetic albums <laughs> that's i know i know the other time you're talking about um Okay, so no, she's right. Well, what I was going to say, but you, I mean, you are correct. It's better than nothing. I should have said you better than nothing because 
You don't want them on the, just on the ground or in paper bags or anything. So I, I, I'm a big bin person. So that's why I'm like, so I'm like, I'm I'm more of that tier. Uh, but you're right. If you don't have that stuff, a box is going. A box will do you. And then you know, there's special like you said, there's special boxes you can also get to. Because you're right, you don't want the melting, disintegrating, warping. Getting uh, dirty. Yeah, so you don't want that, so you don't that stuff. So it's like it's very much, but um, yeah. And I but so that's you're right. That's that is very really different. Um, so what was the impetus for I mean you do this for a living, but what was the impetus for writing this book? Um, I kind of um well it's when I joined the photo managers and yeah, yeah. I had all those boxes of my mom's photos to organize, I just thought more and more it just I was also at the same time reminded of my interest in genealogy. I had put that on the back burner for many years while I was doing my organizing business. And, and so it just came together in my mind for me, the, the genealogy and the organizing and the photos and the legacy. So a legacy, a lot of people think, well, what's a legacy? They, they think of leaving money to people or having right. a business building with your name on it or something. No, anything you leave is a legacy. It could be a good legacy or a bad legacy. Uh, but if you are leaving a house full of junk and you know it, that's not probably the legacy you want to leave. So why not make decisions about your stuff now so your loved ones don't have to later? And that includes telling the stories of your things too. Even if you don't, even if you don't, you know, clear the clutter. You can at least identify a few things that are special to you and tell their stories so that your loved ones will know that they're special. Don't, don't assume that they remember where that painting came from on the wall and why you liked it so much, you know? Yeah. And as it's, no, go ahead, please go ahead. Well, so, so, I, so I was kind of, kind of not totally a photo organizer um, but I did start doing genealogy for there. I mean, there. Are, what I mean is, there are photo organizers who are far more yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. technologically yeah. Um, have more technological expertise. I thought I was going to be a, a digital photo, a, a remote, a virtual digital organizer. But there's a lot to that, and I have lots of good people to refer you to if you need one. And uh, and and same with uh, all the inf all the advice about about organizing photos and things. And it, I have lots of uh, resources in the book about bloggers and podcasters and uh, service providers that I like, yeah. that I recommend. Yeah, All right. that's the thing, she does do that also. Like I said, this book is so unique to me because it's not just a how-to guide to photo organizing or a how-to guide for geology, it's a little bit of both. Um, plus a resource guy. I, I, I really I like it's a combo because I'm a combo. I do a little a bit of both. You do, and they both mean something to me. And I hadn't seen that combo before. So she mentions. I want to mention a couple people. Napa, of course. We that's how we know each other. The photo managers, the Association of Professional Genealogists. You know, personal historians Facebook groups. So you can go on there. Um, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of resources in here, and 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 acknowledge what she makes and stuff. It's really cool in here. Um, she also gives you internet search tips. I love that. Of which word? It, it's very. Uh, you know, know, because people people are like, well, where what what's the best place to get the archival um, things? It, well, I can say what I what I think is the best, or I could say I could give you a few choices, but there's no guarantee they're going to be there tomorrow. And and so some people people say, well, I can, where do I what do I do then? And and the answer is, if you some people think they're really good at uh, researching on the internet, yeah. other people think they're terrible, and they don't even try. And so my one of the things I'm trying to do in the book is to encourage you to be resourceful, yeah, so nice. that you can, if something happens to your favorite resource or your favorite blogger you know, you can still find information that will help you. Yes. There are two sections I just want to mention before we wrap up that make me smile. Yeah. Sorry, your kids don't want your stuff. <laughs> and mom silverware, folks. I don't know how many times I've dealt with both. And here's the deal, kids. My mother knows this. She watched my shows. I have permission to say this. 
my mother's a hoarder, so I I said you're already a burden. So I right, thought so we let we talk about that all the times, but because it's 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 she's like it just it is it, at this point it's what it is what it is. Um, so little bits and pieces I'm helping clear out some stuff, a little here and there, and she's open to that a little bit. So doing that, but I know in this lifetime we'll get it all done. Um, so we're getting I'm getting I'm organized. I'm getting ready. I got the team ready. We're all ready. Whatever, if anything happens. You know which of her things are the most special to her? I do. Good. We've, we've talked about it. We've actually, yeah. we've actually, I think being an organizer, it just, it's helping, not just being your son, but being an organizer, I asked certain questions over the last 13 years. I came home 13 years ago, so I, I, we live four miles away from each other. So I go over there and I, I know she pointed out things and let me know <laughs> where things are. But, it's, it's, but she's one of those where we got to check every single book Every single night, she puts hides money and play. Like she's one of that generation, so it's like it's gonna be crazy, uh, but we're gonna do it and whatever. But um, I was like, it's just it is what you, again. You can't control everything. It is what it is. But she has a lot of photos, um, and before I started gathering them, actually I put them in one spot. I have a, a dining room table. I mean, actually, it's funny. Just I, I even before I do, it's like I were doing that. We we're just kind of saying we want. We she wanted to see what she had in photos. Uh -huh. like, what do I have? And I go, well, let's, so every time we find a box of photos, here's the box of photos, put them right in the same spot. So right now the dining room probably has all, most of the photos she has. And well, said, and is she meanwhile taking digital photos? Look on her phone, of course. So every, every single one of us is taking more photos every day yeah. than the professors did in their entire lifetime. Exactly. Oh, because for me, because also we should mention this, um, I'm on Snapchat, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. Those are all pictures too, right? It, there's all that. Well, hopefully, hopefully though, hopefully those are copies. Hopefully they're already on your hard drive and you've uploaded them to those as opposed to, so you've shared them on those services as opposed to trying to store them on those services. So yeah. social media is a great place to share photos, but some people think that if they have the photos going directly from their camera to Facebook, that Facebook is saving their photos for them. No, that's another, that's another, if you do nothing else, make sure your photos are not going directly to Facebook, have them preserved in, in their full sizes yes. and, and resolutions. And, um, I'm distracted by the fact that my, my new, my upgraded Zoom is is sensitive to my hand motions. I know it's like it's a it's like, hi. I see you, Hazel. You may speak. You may speak now. So they're just going raise the hand. I go. I'm not in class right now. You're not in class. It's okay. I might want to turn that off during. You know. That's um, so funny. I love it. I love well, it. anyway, social media is not for storage. It's for just for sharing. And I, and that, and I do and my I have. And my mother and I, years ago, when I first came home, we took her photos that were on one stick or on a computer and put them on sticks. So we actually have, thank God, we did get several computers you know, crashed. We have about three or four data sticks of some, some of the same photos. So she could always have them. So that was one thing we did a long time ago. So, and little data sticks are small, they're little, little baby things. I mean, they're like, they're not, they don't take a lot of space. Okay. And, you know, I have this, I care, I have these little sort of hard drives. This is this is two gigabyte. I mean, like it's wonderful. It's like 40 bucks right. on Amazon. Um, those things are perfect for stuff like that. And I but I'm I'm like you, I'm like gather them all together in one spot and go from there. That's 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 the organizing way. That's what I do too. That's right. I love it. Hazel, so thanks for being on the show. The book is called What's a Photo Without the Story? How to Create Family Legacy. And who's on the cover? That is my grandma, Hazel Eilery Clay Thornton, who I never met. She died before I was born. And I was so intrigued by that photo that I did some research on it to find out, you know, when it was taken and where. And that's one of the longer uh, photo stories I tell. The, the book is not about me and my family, but I do have some examples in the book. I, know, I love the picture. I love her outfit. I do. I love her outfit photos. Doesn't she look like fun? Yes, she does. No, she, no, she, she does. I love, I just love, I love her headband and, outfit. She and also, a, I never saw that picture until I was 60 years old. Where was it? My dad didn't share it with me. 
So that's another thing about the book. Share your photos because don't assume that everyone's seen them. Because I had never seen that photo until I was 60 years I know, old. I love it. I do. I love it. I was like, I love this photo. Very cool. Um, where can they follow you? Where can they get the book? Um, the book is on Amazon. You can um, check out my other resources. I've got a genealogy and a photo and a legacy um, resource roundup on my website, which is org- orgforlife.com, which is spelled O-R-G, numeral four, L-I-F-E dot com. And I'm on social media, but the books, the book is on Amazon. So I will have it, I'll have it, I'll have it in the link, folks. You guys just go to it. Run out. We don't have to run anymore. Just go on your, your phone, your tablet, and buy it. That's right. <laughs> if this is a book that this is a book that I think everybody needs if you come from family and have photos. So it's it's a book for everybody. There's some books that are very specific for certain people. This is for everybody. So go out and get it. At whatever Come level, at whatever level of interest you have in in genealogy, photos, or stories, or families, or legacies, there's something in it for you. I, I agree with you. There is, and I told you to do it. So people do it because I told you to. Uh, <laughs> I'm James Lott Jr. Of course, a lot of help.com. I'm actually starting to teach classes again online. to events. So go to there and you'll find out what's going on with me in that space. But also, I do all kinds of shows. Of course, this show we're heading towards 400. I actually have no idea what we'll do with my 400th show yet, um, but it's coming. Just stay tuned. I'm sure it'll be something big and glorious like myself. Um, but organizing, <laughs> organizing, organizing, you know, is one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, getting organized um, for yourself, for your family, for future generations. It's just, there's nothing like it. I, I'm telling you, I just, I just talk about this business forever. So thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for supporting the show. Thanks, Hazel, for supporting me and the, and the channel. And I will see you next time.